Hello and welcome to the first of our Advent Bible studies. Um, Can you believe um, that we've made it uh, all the way to Advent already? Over the next four weeks, we're going to be exploring uh, some of the key themes that emerge from the Christmas story uh, as we use this Advent time to really prepare for this, the coming Messiah. Uh, And so we're going to be looking at themes of of hope, uh, of peace, of love and of joy over the next four weeks um, to help us really focus in on, on what God might be saying to us through his word um, in the season that we find ourselves in uh, just now. So we're going to start that this week by looking um, at the theme of hope, and we're going to use some famous verses from John uh, chapter 1 just as a way into that. Just before um, we, we kick on, um, a couple of things um, that have been really helpful in my preparation for this. Firstly, um, I want to point you towards um, a YouTube channel called The Bible Project. Um, now, if you've not come across this before, I'd really encourage you to go and check it out. Um, for each of the four themes that we're looking at over the next four weeks, there are um, word study videos. Now, they might sound really scary and a bit frightening, but they're actually really accessible, really easy to understand, and give you a real insight about um, the, the themes that we're looking at um, all the way through Scripture. So the one on hope in particular has been really helpful as I've been preparing. I'd encourage you to go and check that out. And then secondly, um, Tom Wright's book, um, Surprised by Hope. If you're looking for something a bit more in-depth, a bit more challenging, challenging, um, then I'd encourage you to look, to look that way as well. Um, but we're going to begin um, in prayer, um, and as we um, set out on this Advent series, as we look at these four really key themes, uh, we want to ask that it would be God who, who speaks to us and inspires us on this journey uh, through Scripture together. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for these opportunities each week to dig deep into your words, and particularly over these next uh, few weeks to dig deep, deeply into these really important themes, themes that um, uh, are really um, uplifting and encouraging for us in this time, and themes that ultimate, ultimately point us uh, towards you, towards who you are and what you've done. Uh, And so, Lord, we pray that you would um, open our eyes and open our hearts. You would bring to life what are some really quite familiar passages of Scripture that we're going to be exploring over the next few weeks. And we pray, Lord, that you would um, give us fresh insight, fresh vision of who you are and who you call us to be. And today, Lord, as we unpack um, this famous chapter of John's Gospel, um, we pray that it would be uh, your Holy Spirit that brings, brings the word to life today in your name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to read um, from John chapter 1, and we're going to read uh, verses 1 through to 14. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world, He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh. And made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. A few key things um, from the passage, just to pull out briefly, and before we dive um, in a bit more depth into this theme of hope. Firstly, um, the Word was there at the beginning uh, and is central to all of creation. That word um, brings life and it brings light. A life that is both physical and spiritual and a light 
that cannot be and will not be overcome by any sort of darkness. And so there's hope right there at the beginning, isn't there? Not only is the light so powerful that nothing could overcome it, but the very source of that light was right there at the beginning, at the very center of all um, the creation of the world. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Some hope straight off the bat then. If we look a bit wider in our scriptures, if we look into the Old Testament, um, in particular there are a few key ideas that emerge um, about hope. Um, And there are are two particular Hebrew words that are used um, to describe hope. And uh, you're going to have to forgive my very dodgy Hebrew pronunciation here. Um, The first one is the word yakal. And you have to like say that like you've got something stuck in your throat. And like yakal, that sort of thing. Um, That literally means to wait for something. So you have this word yakal, this Old Testament idea of hope. But you also have um, this word kavar. Um, The word kar. Um, is about um, a cord, um, and the idea is, is about the, a cord that is pulled um, tense, so pulled um, with some tension, um, and that, that idea of, of it being pulled to a point where it's about to snap. So that expectation, that anticipation of something that was about to happen, that's the idea of the word kavar. So the big idea of hope, I guess then, Um, is about waiting and expectation. The big question um, is, as Christians, what is our hope? What is our distinctly, uniquely Christian hope that we can hold on to um, in these difficult and challenging days? Um, And as as I've been preparing this, um, I've I've been pondering the tension that we find ourselves in, um, Because we know that as Christians we have um, this hope that we wait patiently for, um, which is the hope of heaven. Um, We we know that we can hope um, in in heaven as a a final destination, if you like. But if if our hope is placed solely in something that is, in a sense, away from this world... um, then I think we miss something. If our focus is solely about something we're waiting for over there, then I think we miss something that's really important. If we see our Christian hope in terms of something that's away from this world, then we miss, I think, what is the fundamental principle of hope that emerges from this whole Christmas story. The New Testament puts forward this idea of, of a living hope, a hope that is alive and at work in the world um, in the here and now, not just something that we wait patiently for. And that is the hope to be, to be reborn, to be recreated almost into a new kind of person. And, and Paul was really um, keen on that idea, you know, that famous verse from 2 Corinthians um, about us being a, a new creation speaks into that. But equally, in this passage from John, we read um, verses 12 and 13. Um, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. That is a hope of a new sort of creation, a new sort of family, a new way for God to relate to his humanity, and a new way for us to relate to one another as God's children, as part of God's family. And so if our Christian hope is for God's new creation that that starts in us, that starts with us, then hope is not just something that we wait patiently for. It's something for us to engage with in the here and now. And ultimately, um, it comes to life in this passage of Scripture. Verses four and five, we've already uh, mentioned it. In him was life, and, and that life was the light to all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. That's hope. Hope that we don't have to be consumed by any darkness that comes. That's a hope for the here and now. All the darkness that surrounds us does not have to consume us. Um, because in Jesus, there is light in the darkness, light that shall not be overcome. Right at the end of what we read from that passage, verse 14, and the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. 
We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. That's the hope, the word that became flesh. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. God who comes and makes his dwelling among us. The Greek word there, the one that's, uh, that we translate as dwelling, um, implies not a temporary dwelling. This is not like an overnight camping trip. This is um, setting up home among us. And it's really interesting that the only other place we find that same word in the New Testament is in Revelation, um, which ultimately is, is looking forward to our eternal hope, our eternal home um, in that new creation, in the new heaven and the new earth. But here again, a hope of a home to come, but equally hope as a reality in our here and now. Ephesians chapter 3 Uh, verses 16 to 19, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Hope is among us, and in fact, hope is within us. It has made its home in us through the Holy Spirit. And as it does that, it is enlightening us to the fullness uh, of all that God is. We have hope in God's ability to bring about change and transformation in our world, in the here and now, not just when we reach our final resting place. And the best thing about that is, is that hope in the here and now means hope amidst the mess, hope amidst the complexity of life, hope amidst the pain and the suffering that we know many of us are feeling, particularly as we head towards Christmas this year. This hope is for the here and now, but we also wait patiently and with expectation for what is to come. Still, that hope that we wait for isn't something that exists separately from this world. It's, it's a bold hope that looks forward to the recreation and the redemption of the whole universe. The new creation that has been made out of us isn't only for us, but it's eventually for the whole of creation, the whole of the universe. That's a bold hope, a hope in God's big, bold rescue mission, a mission that in a lot of ways begins with this Christmas season in God physically entering our world, taking on our humanity, and making his dwelling, making his home among us and in us. Hope is not something to be sniffed at. And my encouragement today is for us to be bold with our hope, to not shy away from being hopeful people, to not shy away from being people who who wait with expectation for God to move, and who don't see God moving as something that will happen separately from us, separately from this life, separately from this world even, but something that we can expect, we can wait for, we can live for even in our here and now. Because ultimately, our hope all comes from looking back to Jesus, seeing who he is, seeing his heart for this world, seeing his compassion, seeing his humility in coming and making his dwelling amongst us as a humble baby. But our hope is also a reality in our present situation and our hope also looks forward to a redemption and a recreation that will truly bring change and transformation, all for the glory and praise of our God. I invite you just to pause and maybe just to ask the Spirit to come and help us to be a bit bolder in what we're hoping for, a bit bolder in our expectations, 
of what God can do in us, but also in the world we see around us. And I guess today, as we see a world that is full of despair, our prayer too is that not only would we be enlightened to the fullness of of the hope that God offers to us, but as we approach Christmas, as we prepare for the coming of this Messiah, that we would be people who are hope bringers, who are hope sharers, who, who communicate the hope that we have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So Holy Spirit, we pray you'd come now, you come and meet with us, you come and minister to us. And once again, you would um, be transforming us from the inside out, Lord. We ask for that, that recreation in us, that we will be made new in the power of your Holy Spirit that the change and the transformation we're we're waiting for and hoping for and expecting to see in our world would start in us today. And we pray, Lord, that we would see you move in power across our city, across our nation, across this globe, Lord. In a time where there is so much despair, Lord, would you bring your unshakable and undefeatable hope We thank you that in you there is life and there is light that will not be overcome. And so, Lord, we pray that we would see you this Christmas time shining like a beacon across the whole world. That there will be an unquestionable move uh, of your power, of your spirit of revival, Lord, across, uh, across these lands. That as we are awakened to the hope we have in you, that others would as well. Our neighbours, our friends, our families would know the hope that we can have in you, our saviour, our redeemer, the hope of the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for for joining us this morning, whether you're one of the brave ones who's woken up early to catch this at seven o'clock or if you're catching up later in the day or later in the week. Um, We hope you find these um, Advent Bible studies helpful um, and so we look forward to joining you again next week where Catherine will be sharing uh, a bit about uh, the message of peace that we find in our Christmas story. God bless you. Have a great rest of the day.